Well, good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Porch Talk. I, of course, am Paul W. Marino, and my partner that I've been missing for months now is... Ed Morandi. I'm Ed back. Randy. I'm back. You're glad to have you back. Not as big as before, but better. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, you uh, look good. Uh, before we get into talking things, I, I'd like to say... Thank you for the well wishes. I wrote this down. But I've been to Bennington Hospital, Saratoga Hospital, Alderley Medical Hospital, back to Bennington Hospital. Uh, my platelets went from 245 down to 2,000. And um, I've been working with Centerwell out of Pittsfield. Uh, Robin headed it up, and I have my, my physical therapist, Aaron. And of course, there was a multitude of nurses that come to my house for the last several months that uh, got me up and going. I was like a vegetable in a chair, mm -hmm. but uh, they got me up and going, and I finally got out. And I didn't realize it, Paul, the astrocity that, 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 that storm did. I mean, I, when I got down to the bottom of my driveway, I looked, and there was still trees all over. My son has been cutting trees and clearing it out and going up West Shaft Road. There's branches and stuff still all over the place. Uh, it must have been real bad. Yeah, it was. Was it? I, I wonder how Tim made out up in Well, Florida. actually, they were buried were they under really? snow up there. Wow. Uh, he was getting ready for his surgery, you know, his, his eye surgery. His eye surgery, yeah. And he was taking a certain medication, well, actually a couple medications, getting ready for it. And uh, then they had the blizzard, and his surgery had to be postponed. Did he have it done yet? Or no. Not, not yet? Oh, wow. Wow. Not no. yet. Well, so I haven't so, been in touch with him, so I didn't know what was going on. In fact, I haven't been in touch with a lot of people. Yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure he'd be happy to hear from you. I will give him a call. I'm going to write that down. And who knows, we might get him on our next show, which is two weeks from tonight. Two weeks from tonight, which would be the 21st? Yes. Aha. So we can get him down here and get him between us, and we can... Do an Oreo squeeze with him and get him going. We can do more if, than if that. He gets, if, he gets, <laughs> <laughs> if he gets his uh, eye done. Well, even if he doesn't, I guess they're, they're waiting to see what happens before they schedule him. Well, that's one of the things that, that, that bothers, bothers me is uh, people that have to have eye surgery, eye uh, eye plants, or whatever, uh, 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 to lose your sight is one thing. Uh, you lose a lot. You lose a lot of the world when you, you lose your sight. It's like hearing oh, you yeah. could, you, you know, hearing you could get away with, uh, touch you could get away with, but when you lose your eyesight, uh, your driving's gone, your TV's gone, your family's gone. It's, it's, t well, it's tough. Well, my mother wasn't that lucky. Uh, her right eye used to be her good eye. Her left eye was terrible. Uh, and then she had, I think it's large cell something, and she lost the sight in her right eye. Oh, really? I didn't so know that. So suddenly her bad eye was her good, good eye. eye. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My mother-in-law, Joan's mother, was the same way. She lost her sight in one eye, and uh, she got on fabulously. She did everything that somebody would do with two eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she did a great job. Well, so now, my mother had given up driving by that time. Yes. Uh, I know that place behind us. Well, that's good because, Dave, would you please put the photo in front of us? Dave is directing tonight rather than Joanne. And uh, the question for tonight is, where was this photo taken? Now, I can tell you uh, that this is a spread production line 
These women are making uh, condensers uh, for Sprug Electric in one of their mills. And the question is, what mill was it in? If you can call in and give us a guess and you're right, you will get bragging rights for the next two weeks. So please give us a call at 664-4408. Wow. All right, Look Dave, at you the amount of people front. there. There's more people there than there is in North Adams. Seems well, like almost, that sometimes. Almost, yeah, yeah. Talking about what's in North Adams. What's going on locally? I haven't been around for since September. Well, let's see. What's going on in North Adams? Uh, well, of course, you know that we have a woman mayor now. Oh, it's, and a good woman mayor. Yes, yes, she is very nice. Not only a good woman mayor, but a good mayor as a woman. That's yes, right. She, she's on the ball. Jen, Jennifer uh, Maxey has been doing yeah, some Jennifer stuff. Maxie. Yeah, she's been doing some stuff that I always said should have been done years ago. She's finally getting up and getting it done. She's got a good committee working for her. Mm -hmm. And uh, although this last storm really put the workers, city workers, in a bind because, I mean, there's a lot to be done out there. Oh, yes. A lot to be done. But we have the now, city what council. What else is going on? The um, Northern Berkshire Retirees Club. Yes. The meeting of which you missed. I missed but... yesterday because I wanted to come today instead of yesterday. I could. I don't think I could have done both, going to the meeting. In mm -hmm. fact, in fact, uh, my uh, physical therapist and my nurse both told me the same thing: stay away from crowds. Don't get involved with a lot of people. I not only missed yesterday's meeting, but. Uh, Last week, I missed my high school get-together, once a month get-together, because there was more than six people going to be there, so I, I didn't want to mm -hmm. do it. Although I do have, like... So uh, wh what would happen if you were in a crowd? Well, the, it wasn't anything that would happen. It was the uh, possibility that I would pick something up. Uh -huh. My immune system is kind of low. Uh, they don't want me around people who have shingles, like I do. Mm -hmm. They don't want me around people who have a cold, who have uh, COVID. I, I got to stay away from those people. So keep away from me. Uh, <laughs> right. Well, so, you don't have to worry about, about getting shingles from me. I have had both shots of the uh, shingles shingle virus. Shingle shots? Yeah. Yes. I should have taken it, but I said... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm almost, I'm 80. Why should I worry about shingles now? Uh, well, <laughs> wasn't bad enough that I was in three hospitals trying to get my blood platelets up. But uh, just when you see the light coming out of the tunnel, yeah, uh, it was a train coming at you. And I got the shingles and I got them bad. Of course, I was diagnosed wrong. Uh, I was diagnosed with having hair falling out of my head onto my chest and it started a fungus mm -hmm. and I had fungal cream to put on it and everything else. And then the following week when my, my uh, nurse showed up from uh, Centerwell, uh, she took one look at me and said, you got the shingles. I said, they said it was a fungal. She said, no, it's shingles. And, and it, Talking about center well, if you're out there and you think you need VNA, I'll tell you something. Call center well and Pittsfield. They're absolutely marvelous. If they come to your house and they see that you need uh, something, they automatically send it into uh, Medicare and it'll be arriving at your door within a couple of days. And they're right on top of things. Uh, all the nurses that come there, uh, they've been nurses for, I don't want to say eon, but they've been nurses for quite a while, and they've handled yeah, every and situation. And they're probably specializing in elders. In elderly. They're specializing in elderly, yes. But why are they with me? I don't know. They, they, I they no just idea. don't know what they're doing sometimes. I have no idea. 
So if you call 664-4408, you can say hello if you just want to say hello, or you can take a guess at what that picture is. And I know I have an aunt in there someplace. I can't see her, but... Uh, You're probably sitting in front of her. Try lowering your head to the table. All the way down. There you go. So further, I can't, further, I can't further, look up further. there. How about if I go like this? No, she's not there. <laughs> oh, that's not her. Aunt Julia, raise your hand. No, she's not going to do that. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I can remember when I was a kid. Like I told you before, they amazed me what they were doing at Sprague Electric at that time. Well, Bill of course, uh, now this... I don't specifically remember the year, but the Sprague log started, I think, around 1936. Wow. And that might be about the time this photo was taken. It appear of course, 1936, Sprague started expanding rapidly. Yep. Uh, they they um, moved into one mill, uh, in 1940, they bought, the, well, they started in the beaver mill. Right. And uh, they expanded into another mill, and then they brought, I'm sorry, they brought, they bought. Bought Brown Street. Okay. No, 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 they bought the Marshall Street complex. Oh, that's right, too. Yeah, and then the they work. also bought uh, the Eclipse Mill complex. Wow. So, they were big. Yeah, they were big. In, in their prime, they were pay, they were uh, employing about four or five thousand people. Wow! In North Adams alone, and of course, uh, as they grew, they got offices and factories all over the country, I know. and then all over the world. I had a person who was married to my second cousin, who was in the higher echelon, and he was shipped over to Italy to uh, set up stuff. He was shipped to Germany. He was shipped to England. Uh, uh, he was uh, one of their go-getters. And another friend of mine was up in Concord, New Hampshire. He started uh, Spreggs up there. And uh, in fact, I went up there one time to do some welding. Uh, I can say it now. They were doing stuff for satellites, ready to get ready to do satellites, and they needed an echo chamber. And I had these little silver tubes about this big, mm -hmm. and probably as big as my finger around, and I had a weld inside it, and I had a, a, a chemical silver, uh, uh, not a chemical, a uh, silver, solder. Si no, silver, pure silver, which they added a blowtorch, which I had to shoot inside, and then we had to go test them. And they, they tested out beautiful, and they sent it to the government, and I, I, after that I never heard of it. But I had these three vials of stuff, and I didn't know what they were, but I did all three vials, and the silver was the best one. And I started taking them, and no, you can't take those. Those are worth tens of thousands of dollars. It was a vial yeah. of platinum, and one of gold, and one of silver. Uh, so I quit. <laughs> they wouldn't let me take yeah, it. I show quit. show them. Oh. Yeah. And of course, what a lot of people don't realize, and dare I say it, uh, the historical society did not realize when they moved into uh, Building 5A, they had the science exhibit, uh, well, the space exhibit, that capacitors made in North Adams oh, yeah. went to the moon. Not only they were on the Saturn rockets and the Apollo rockets. And in my collection, I have a photo of a spread capacitor being installed in a Saturn rocket. Who made the disc with all the names on it that was at the Historical Society? There was a, a silver disc, they, or was it a silver disc? A gold disc. I think you're yeah. thinking of um, the Voyager. The Voyager. Yeah, th this is uh, entirely different. I don't know if Sprague still existed when Voyager was sent out. 
Well, somebody made the disc, and I think it was made in Spregs. Uh, it could be, but it was gold. No, I wanted to say, Voyager was gold, but this was a silver disc that was put on the moon. That's where it went. Mm -hmm. The one that went on the moon, so that had to be Armstrong, which was what? Oh, that was about 1968, I 68, think. 68, 69, when he went to the moon. And uh, they put that disc on there. Uh, it, 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 it was probably about this big, but a, a print, small print. You had to put it under a microscope to see what, the, what it actually said. And uh, we had one at the Historical Society. I believe my cousin had donated it to the Historical Society or put it on loan. Uh, Probably on loan, because I don't, I don't ever remember seeing it yeah. in the space exhibit. And the other thing is... No, it was downstairs. It wasn't up at the space exhibit. It was downstairs in... Well, that's strange. They'd put it down there yeah. instead of in the space exhibit. But the other thing is that when the Apollo missions were going on, there was a scale model of one of the lunar rockets parked on the lawn of the Research and Development Center. Wow. And when I was walking to Drury, I went past that every day, and there it is, exactly as it would have been on the launch pad. Wow. Little North Adams was involved in a lot of things. Oh, yes. Oh, wasn't it? So now I've got, got a question, and I don't want to get political, but they closed the Brown Street Bridge, I heard. Uh, uh, if they did, my guess is they're working on it or on the street. Okay, because I was just thinking, uh, being part of the uh, Northern Berkshire EMS, that our... Ambulances now, if you had to go up to like K&M Garage, instead of cutting across mm -hmm. Brown Street, you got to go all the way up uptown. Yeah. Go all the way over the bridge. Yeah. You're adding, you're adding minutes on. And and, and, uh, and don't forget the houses that are there, adjacent oh, to uh, Cascade Paper. Right. Right. To go to Cascade Paper, you had to go all the way up to Houghton Street, take a right, go up. Uh, Veterans Bridge to get it. Yeah. Instead of just going across the bridge and hanging a left. Uh, there's just a, there's a lot going on. Uh, I think I think that I know they got it under control. That they're, they're planning to do something. Uh, yes, hopefully um, they can get it done. Yeah, Mass Mocha is getting a six-figure grant. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. There. Well, that's six figures, I'll have you know. Well, if you don't count the decimal, yes. Yes. <laughs> As uh, I was saying, <laughs> to, um, to look into how they can get people to leave uh, Mocha and go into the downtown. Well, you know, you, 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 you hit the wrong thing with me because uh, state money, $750,000, what is that going to do for the people and the businesses up on Ashland Street to get them people downtown? Nothing. $750,000 going to Mass Mocha. And I can almost guarantee you that with the $750,000, there is going to be an administrator there who will take 10% of that, or $75,000. Call me easily. up if I'm wrong, Jennifer. They'll take 10% of that for their own pockets. Uh, don't worry about getting the people from Mass Mocha downtown. And the, the, the article that I read was, they even considered taking down the Veterans Bridge. Yeah, the so, overpass. I, know, I don't see what that would do. I don't know. I don't know because those four columns that the kids had put the uh, cartoons on, it was good for the uh, watchtower clock there. Yeah, mm -hmm. so those are going to be removed. but. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. 
why don't they take $750,000 and fix building 5A, building 6, in the park? Yeah. They could do and that. take out those uh, bricks and put some of the paving stones back. The Replant paving stones. Replant some they... of the trees. You're on a historical commission, right? I'll yes. talk to you after. I don't want to say what I've got in mind now. Well, you, well, I actually have an idea for that. Uh, if, uh, if they wanted to keep the, the paving bricks that they have, they should get rid of the curlicues and put in lines representing the actual rail lines we used to have running into the park. So have one in front of the park, one in front of building 5A, one, one behind, behind it, it with a big deep uh, trench, which yeah. the, the cars would come in and dump the coals there and then by shoot they went up to the octopus. Yes. The octopus, and for those people that don't know, is up on third floor of the historical society. There was this big round thing with, with four different arms, the different size uh -huh. coal that was separated. Uh, plus, plus, there was another track that went in front of building four right. and alongside one, two, and three. Yes, yeah. And in fact, some of the, uh, some of the hooks for the block and tackles are still there. In fact, in fact, that line there, when I was in high school, I worked for Jim Caridi, or Caridi Sales. He would have a freight car, one whole freight car come in, park in front of the building, uh, what is it, six? Uh, no, building four. Four, building four. We'd park in front of building four, and we'd have to go down there and unload it. And when you open the I've door- I've done that too. Full of sleds, three different sizes, small sleds, medium sleds, and large sleds, and you have to do it. And it took us almost all day to empty the, the, the cart, and somebody had to count them and make sure there was 4,452 or something, and uh, different sizes. But it's going back 1958, seven, well, as I say, I did that myself in the 70s. Wow. And, um, well, a, another thing I'd like to see, I don't know what the cost involved would be, but uh, grease up the, um, the, uh, the crane that's by Building 6. Yeah, that's so good. Lubricate there. it, and a couple times a year, park a truck on either side of it, and unlock the crane and use it to lift some cases off of the one truck. To the other? Yeah, oh, load yeah. it down and then move them back. And that would demonstrate the history of North Adams right there very easily. Well, what a lot of people don't remember, don't know, I mean, they can't remember it because it's so long ago. But you know, the Rail come in from the little tunnel, the, the little tunnel on one side, and the the other train come up from Pittsfield. It was from one side of the park to the other side of the park, and they had carriages there to just distribute the goods that were on the the uh, train. They had to go back to Albany mm -hmm. before the tunnel got put in. That's how stuff moved from Pittsfield to. New York City. It's a long time ago. You were just a kid. That's right. Yeah. <coughs> that kind of kid. Uh, now, another thing I'd like to see done, uh, you remember Jack Lou's building on Marshall Street? Of course. And they have that uh, brown siding on it. Yeah. I would like to see that siding come off and see if they can restore the original, original 1920s facade. Yep. At this point, the only part of that building that has the original facade on it is Subway. And of course, well, 
this is going to upset some people who love Barrett. Uh, Barrett was mayor when the um, when some siding was taken off of that, and he went to Jack Lew and said, "You are not going to have that ugly brick front. You're going to put siding." And so they went and laid bricks in under the windows, and then put brick face on it. And mm. at the very same time, the Adams Community Bank was building a, a branch office on Eagle Street. And guess what they put on it? You got it. The same. A mock <laughs> 1920s facade. And here we could have had an original 1920s facade. I got a question I wanted to ask you. Of course, we all know that Justina Carlson has passed away. Yes. Have you got a replacement for her? Um, at this point, I am president by default because I was vice president. Okay. But we do need um, a seventh person. Hmm. <laughs> am I too busy, Joan? <laughs> Well, uh, I did remind the mayor that we do need a seventh person. Um, I don't know what she's done about it, uh, but if you like, I have her ear. It's right here in my pocket. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, God. Oh, dear God. Um, no, um, I can. Run it by her. Yeah, I can suggest yeah. her to you. Su yeah, suggest, suggest me. You to, to her. her. Okay. And I've got to remember to give her her, her ear back. Give her, her was it the right ear or left ear? I don't remember. I just remember how she screamed when I ripped it off. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a lot. I thought you liked me. There's a lot going on in North Adams that the uh, historical commission has to look at. Uh, these people coming in that they, they want to all of a sudden do something, and. Uh, well, one of the things is the, the airport. I'm, oh, I'm yes. very concerned about the airport, not, not just because my son's on the commission, but because I have friends who, who live in Connecticut that fly up once in a while to, to meet and stuff. And, I, and I'm also wondering, when the heck they're going to get a restaurant in there or somebody to serve food to these people flying in? Mm -hmm. And I figure when... when uh, uh, October comes around and the fall foliage or the summer of something going on this summer, graduation time, Williams graduates. When Williams graduates, we always see a couple of ear jets pulling up there, you know? Mm -hmm. And the, the people are looking for places to go, what to do. I had somebody stop me one time. I was waiting for Ernie to fly up from uh, uh, Connecticut. And a, a lady come over with her husband uh, she did the talk and she wanted to know where they could go, what they could do in, in this area. And they were up here for visiting some friends who when they got here, they were out of town. The friends that they wanted to visit were out of town. I, I could have mm -hmm. told her you should have called ahead of time, but I didn't. And uh, I told them there's mass mocha. Yeah. And, you know, there's mass mocha to go to. There's downtown restaurants to go to. Uh, if you want to take a trip, if you, you, you want to get a car or rent a car or something, you have to go to Pittsfield. But uh, I told him I'd give him a ride downtown and I could come back and pick Ernie and his wife up. But they said no, they were going to walk. And oh after, boy. Yeah, after Ernie and his wife come in, uh, we chatted a while. We, we took off and we were riding and we went downtown. Of course, we come over the... Uh, uh, Veterans Bridge, and there were these two people walking still. Wow. Yeah, they walked right from the airport all the way downtown. And you want to know something? And I'm not being facetious, but it didn't cost us $750,000. They did it on their own. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing that I don't like about the airport is the city council changed the name from Harriman West to North Adams Airport. That's selling out our history. Well, isn't it? Isn't it? 
I don't know what the word is, but Conti Middle School is now Cold Grove Park School, Cold Grove School. Mm -hmm. I know Cold Grove was there first, okay? But Silvio Conti got us $30 million to fix that school up. And with one stroke of the pen, Alkenbright took his name off and put Cold Grove on. Now why? I, well, I, actually, there, uh, it was a committee decision. Was committee decision? Uh, yeah, I was there, and uh, I would have liked to see the name Drury go back on go it. Go back on it. But uh, they decided, uh, the school committee decided, uh, no, uh, we'll name it Cold Grove Park Elementary. School committee? Yeah, I think it was the school committee. Who was, who was mayor at the time? Oh, well, that was Alcumbright. Of course, that's what I just said. Alcumbright with one swipe of the pen. He was the head of the school committee. He was the mayor of North Adams. He changed it. For what reason? He didn't like the Republican. I like Republicans. I like Democrats. And that doesn't make any difference to me what they are. But some people carry it to the graves. Anyhow. You get the second call that comes in. I'll take the first right. call that comes in. 664-4408. We're looking to... Now, both of you that are watching tonight, one of you, please pick up the phone and call us, 664-4408. Make a guess, even if it's just a wild guess. There are only so many mills in North Adams to guess where this photo was taken. Take a guess. Even if it's a wild guess, you might be right. And if you are, you get bragging rights for the next two weeks. Ah, uh, miss you, Chris. Wherever and you are at this there. point, I'm willing to suggest that your wife come on the air and try to guess. I don't think she'll come on the air. If she will, she call up. Call up 664-4408, or if you get hurt in a car, 444-4444. Four, 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 four. Yeah. No phone. Oh, wait, we don't have the thing here. Uh, that's all right. Okay, uh, you can do it. The cable is broken, so ah. if there is a call, if and when there's a call, Dave will pick it up in there and then alert us that there is a there's call. There's a call, okay. I was going to say, there was something missing at the table. And that is? And it's Phil. And I don't know how much time we have left. Uh, we have about 50 minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, no. No, 40 minutes. 40 minutes, yeah. About 40 minutes left. Uh, so. Shall I take my mic off and get Phil? No. Who? Phil. The pheasant. Oh, Phil. That's what's missing. Phil. Yes. I haven't seen Phil since August. Oh. God. Well, we can wait on the bright time. side, he still looks the same. Yeah. We got to send him out to get done. Or I should shoot another one. Yeah, I think shooting another one is better. Yeah. Uh, get a female. We can name it Philomena. But there's no color in them. They're brown. At least Phil's got some color in him. Oh, well, we can get both of them, Phil and Philomena. Yes. One and at each end of the table. Yeah. And don't forget, folks, this week is Easter. Yes. Uh, it's don't time. forget. We gotta it's go time for, for rabbit stew. Yes. And we've got to find those eggs. Oh, yes. That the rabbits have. I wonder if the chickens know about this. Uh, well, if, if you watch the Cadbury commercials, all those animals, including the white bunny, bark, 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 and the bark, lion, bark, bark. Yeah, yes. and the pig. Yeah. So come on, if, if you're tired of listening to us babble on like this, please give us a call, 664-4408. And if you don't want us to, we won't even ask you about the photo behind us and ask you where that photo was taken. I think it was taken inside. Now, you know you're not supposed to give away the answer. Oh, that's right, too. 
Orange, you were shamed. Well, don't forget, it's been six months since I've been on the air. That's true. Is it six months? Uh, September. I'll forgive you this once. October, November, December. January, February, March. So, let's see, what else is going on? Uh, uh, Hoosick River Revival mm. has gotten a bunch of money for a uh, feasibility study to be done by the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, and what are they going to study? They're going to study the river, the drought, yeah, the what elevation. What might be done? The elevation of the river coming into North Adams. That's well, th they need to examine uh, what ideas we have are feasible and uh, how they are going to make it happen so that uh, the river is attractive and healthy as well as providing flood protection. Well, the flood protection, uh, Nick Mantello had some pictures on Facebook of the river when it was up like six inches or so oh, from yeah. the top. Nearly a hundred percent. Nearly a hundred percent and I said uh, how much is that? And I can remember when they were first putting that in, I was in school and they said that they'll be okay because if the water comes over the top of that, they'll come over at 90,000 gallons a second. And when you see the pictures that Nick took, you could say, wow, that, was it a second or a minute? Oh yeah. A second. Well, I, 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 I have pictures of that too. Yeah. Um, I went out once the, the worst of the storm was over and saw some amazing things, took some photos. Some of them were a bit blurry, but some of them were eye-popping. And then I went out the next day and found myself singing Goodnight Irene <laughs> while I was taking pictures. Now the thing is, Irene changed a lot of people's minds in North Adams about, about the fixing the chutes. You know, oh, they want to get rid of the chutes and we won't have any protection. Well, no, that's not what they want to do. No. What they want, now the thing is, those chutes were built with a 50 year lifespan. Uh, and when I was four years old in 1958, uh, the River Street chute was under construction. All right. So I remember my mother taking me down to Shapiro's shop to visit my father. He was the manager. And I dropped my teddy bear down the bank. And my father had someone go down and get it. You know, I'd have thrown you over. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why you weren't there. That's right, but I was alive. <laughs> yes. 1958, so, so wow. So the thing is, today, I'm 69, which means those shoots are past their life expectancy. Their life expectancy. And uh, you remember that behind the car wash on River Street, a, a, part, a section of the wall fell down. Right. Uh, they fixed that. And when, they, uh, and when one of the walls fell in Willow Dell, they discovered that it did not have enough of the um, rebar in it. Now, rebar is an L-shaped piece of metal. This piece of metal goes up in the wall. Right. And this, the L, sticks into the floor, the concrete floor. So there are two of those. But then there are two that are facing the other way. So this goes into the wall, and this goes into the bank behind. And what they discovered was, for reasons entirely unknown, 
the builders did not put in the, the rebar facing the bank. It's called skimming. You don't do what you're supposed to do, and you get paid for what you didn't do. Yeah. It, it's a part and of the construction when game. The rebar going into the floor rusted out. Come over. Yeah, it came down. Well, one of the things that I, I uh, talked to people before, I think I had a good uh, talk with Daryl, Daryl English. Yeah. That uh, one of the problems is this they put the walls up, and the city did not go around and cut the trees that were growing next to the wall. That's right. They didn't did not cut the grass around there. They did not take care of it. And when the trees start growing, their roots start pushing. And that's one of the reasons why the uh, walls are caving out. Uh, if you look, if you go up Union Street and just look over the side to your right, you can see all the trees growing along the, the bank. Uh, oh, well, you go, up to the, uh, you go up to the Eclipse Dam and look yes. on the other side, there's a tree growing out of the wall. Yes. Yep. Things that should have been done but haven't been done because they saved a couple dollars by not doing it. Yep. 664-4408. And uh, we have 16 minutes and 35 seconds. So please don't just sit there at home uh, flipping through the channels. While you're on this channel, give us a call, 664-4408. I don't hear the phone ringing. No, I don't either. Oh, wow. Well. Joan, why don't you go out into the lobby and call in and make a guess? <laughs> you can watch it on the monitor and you can make a guess. That's the way, Joan. Jump up out of the chair. That's it. Walk across to the... No, no. Open, no. The, open the door before <laughs> you walk through. That's the way. That's better. Now close the door and... Oh, I guess she can't hear me out in the lobby. Uh, so... I'm just kidding. She didn't really bump into the door. <laughs> She's still sitting on the stool there, not cooperating. You know, when I, scatter, when I scattered my mother's ashes, my mother didn't cooperate either. She did with Wendy? No, no. Um, uh, I, I arranged this uh, little ceremony. Uh, one of her friends... Uh, played a tune on the recorder. Okay. And I had divided up her ashes into three jugs about this size. And this wasn't one of them, was it? No. Okay. No. And uh, then it turned out I had two pints left over, so I gave one of those to each of my brothers so they could do something with her uh, at, when they got home. And uh, the first jug of ashes was dumped out by the daughter of her first friend in this area. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. And then, being her youngest son and the one who stayed home and looked after her, uh, I dumped out the second half and then the, I'm sorry, the second third. And the final third was done by our minister's five-year-old daughter, oh. who was her newest and youngest friend. So I pointed out several areas that were uh, good for uh, spreading the ashes. The garden, the forsythia, the former vegetable garden, the, um, uh, the rhubarb patch, her favorite stone on the wall, and then Cedric's grave, and there were a couple other places and when I had put some, some of her in all of those places, I found I had a little left. So thinking, oh, well, I'll 
toss her up in the air, and she'll float down. She came straight down, almost on top of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And then we sang a rousing chorus of always look on the bright side of life and went to lunch. Very good. Very, I used to enjoy when your mother came down to the historical society and I was working. We sat and talked a lot. A lot of times we talked about you. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I, I, I never knew, outside of Ralph and you, I never knew you had a third brother. Yeah, so Mark. You had a second brother, rather, Mark. Uh, she filled me in on a lot of things. Good things. A lot of good Did things. Did she tell you that she was ticked off at me? No. Well, now, of course, she refused to come down to the society when I was president. Oh, really? Yeah. Yep, that, that's my thing, not her thing. And after I got chased out, <laughs> then she decided she's going to go down there. Oh, this is wonderful. You ought to come down. You know, I said, uh, Lorraine won't be here. You, know, you can come down. And, and she knew how badly hurt I felt. You know, because I felt like I had been punished for following proper procedure and so on. And, and so she kept insisting that I come down because Lorraine won't be there. And I didn't, I, I didn't set foot in that place uh, in 5A until after Lorraine had been chased out. And the board well, asked she, she me wasn't to. Chased, she wasn't really chased out. Uh, <clears throat> we had a, uh, what he called himself, a bean counter. We were like an accountant. Yeah. In, and he kind of talked to her and, and said, you can't keep cash and pay things by cash. We need a paper trail. We're going to set you up with a checkbook and everything else. And you have to do it this way so that I can keep track of everything. And she didn't want to do it that way. Yeah, this is uh, how I yeah, do it. Yeah, this is the way I do it. I have a, a shoebox full of cash, and when I pay something, I pay them in cash. And there's no receipts, there's nothing. So uh, this gentleman said, well, it can't be done that way, because if you're going to do it that way, I'm out of here. I don't want to keep track. Well, we had, at that time, became popular, and we were Actually, we had a good size uh, gift shop, and we had a lot of money coming in and spending out. And uh, she didn't want to do it that way. So, uh, with, uh, with people like Robert Campanile and myself, when we we laid that place out, Robert actually laid it out, and I did the work down there, the physical work. And towards the end, uh, uh, Chuck Cahoon and, and Armin Sine come in to help me. But it, that was up on the third floor. I already did the first and second mm -hmm. floor, and the half the third floor, and they were doing it. Uh, they come in to help me do it, and it, it was like when I used to help my father. Let's do it this way, and he would say, no, that's not the way you do it. You do it this way, and I would I'll tell them, oh, you can't do it that way. You got to do it this way here, and we kind of argue with each other, but they yeah, I remember you saying about you needed to buy a ladder. Yes, I needed you to needed buy a ladder. Well, we don't have the money for a we ladder. We don't have the money for the ladder, but they did buy other stuff, you know? Like they have money register. for a ladder. Fix the, can you change that light up there? I can't reach it. Even with the extension pole to go up there, I had to get a 10-foot ladder, not a 6-foot ladder, so I could get up on a Top of, almost the top of the 10-foot ladder with the long pole to get in there and take the light out and change it. And they weren't going to spend the money for a 10-foot ladder. So I didn't change the lights. But all in all, I figured that I did my duty. I did my time. Mm -hmm. Like uh, looking for that old oak tree with the yellow ribbon around it. I, I was done. I left, and I, I left the... Uh, I did what I could do. Mm -hmm. 
and 664-4408. Well, we're down to about eight minutes. Now, I normally wait until the last five. Shall I give the secret away? What secret? About the photo, where it was taken. It was taken, it was taken right here when this place was, no, it's not. No, this was uh, the Windsor Print Works. Yeah. Uh, Dave, would you put the photo in front of us again, please? How does he do that? Well, he doesn't do it the way I do it. I know, he does it the right way. I mean, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Bang, zoom. All right. This was taken in the Brown Street Mill. Oh! And I think this was around 1936, thereabouts. Um, it, was, uh, it was their first expansion in North Adams. Uh, when they came here as the Sprague Electric, um, no, I'm sorry, Sprague Specialties Company, uh, they were put in the Beaver Mill. And uh, they went through uh, a good deal of nonsense, and then um, uh, R.C. and his, uh, his brothers bankrupted the company, and um, Mr., uh, Mr. Flood came in, and he was put in charge by the local investors, and he sold the company plane, bought a house on Church Street and told R.C., this is where you live. Because R.C. and Julian were still living in Quincy and commuting daily in the company plane. Oh! <laughs> yes. So uh, R.C. was told, this is where you live. And then he was told, you're my sales manager. Go out and sell this company. And so we went out and started, and uh, when World War II came along, uh, they needed to expand, and they bought the, uh, the Brown Street Mill, the former Johnson uh, textile mill, and they set up this line and probably other lines of capacitor making. Uh, they started making gas masks, uh, bomb parts and so on. Uh, and then in 1940, they bought um, the um, Marshall Street complex and made that their corporate headquarters for what was now the Sprague Electric Company. Right, right. The bomb parts. They and made... then further, they expanded into the, um, the Eclipse Mill complex. Talk about bomb parts. <clears throat> uh, had a good uh, conversation with Fred about the Manhattan Project and what Sprague Electric did for the Manhattan Project. And I believe, of course, somebody out there could correct me, maybe you could correct me, that uh, he worked on the detonating device for the Fat Man, which was in. Uh, Hiroshima, yeah, or Hiroshima. Yeah. yeah, that could well be. Yeah, they worked on the uh, detonated device to trigger it off one mile above the ground. So when that happened, and you see that film where the B-29 drops the bomb, and, uh, and, that's and not, then that's the not tails the it out of there. That's not the one Slim Pickens rode down on. No. 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 Uh, he actually wrote the bomb. <clears throat> the bomb. Itself. How I loved the bomb. And yes, Doctor Strange Love, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the, the bomb. bomb. And Peter Sellers played three parts there. Miss him. Anyhow, they did the uh, Manhattan Project because when Mass Mocha took over there, they did run into a problem with uh, radioactivity on the floor. Mm hmm. So that was uh, uh, what that the, must have been in Building Six. I don't because forget where I, it was. I remember being all over that complex, except for the first two floors 
of Building 6. I don't know where it was. I, I don't remember. You know, they closed off the bridge and they closed off the stairwells. So we have three minutes left. Time goes by when you're having fun. And uh, Joan, why don't you come on the show and see if you can identify these women in this photo? I try. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> she's uh, not going to do it, folks. No, she's not coming on. But she comes on, we've got to pay her extra. That's right. We've got to pay her scale. Well, we can take her to um, uh, the Kraft Food Barn and get her a, uh, a burger about this big. Ooh, I can go for a burger. In fact, maybe we'll go to uh, Burger King. How's that sound? She's not answering me. Oh, she's got a wicked laugh, though. Oh, yes. So, we have two minutes now. So, if you would like uh, us to talk about something, uh, please give us a call. Well, it's too late to call it now because but, the it, show's almost over. But um, send me an email, historymanatcopper.net. Uh, if there's something you'd like us to talk about, and we'll be happy to talk about that uh, on our next show, which is two weeks from today. Which is the 21st, 14 days. Yes. Wow. Now, something else to think about is if you're of retirement age, please consider joining the Northern Berkshire Retirees Club. If you are from North Adams, Adams, Clarksburg, Cheshire, Cheshire Florida, Savoy, Savoy Pownall, Stamford, or Reedsboro, or Williamstown, Williamstown. please come to a, a club meeting. Uh, and if you like what you see, consider becoming a member. We meet the first Thursday of each month um, at 10 a.m. at the Mary Spitzer Center here in North Adams. Correct. And now, now I understand there's a few ladies that belong. Yes, that's right. That's we good. do have ladies. And we're looking for more members, like Joan, perhaps. Or Well, I no, just paid Joan, my dues this Joan week. Joan isn't old enough no. uh, to be a member. No. She's what, 28? 29. Uh, 29. Uh, uh, I just paid my so dues. So she's getting up there. I'm a member now. Good for Finally you. I got my dues paid after Yeah, 18. and the dues are only $15 a year. Which entitles you to come and see Paul. Oh, don't scare them off. Oh, no. Hey. So thank you, Dave, for directing. Thank you for watching. It's good to see you back, Thank Ed. you very much. Have a good Easter. <laughs>